Hey guys, it's Sam with Mystery Box. Today I'm going to show you how to convert a time lapse into HDR video, something that you've shot with Camera Raw into something that you can exhibit in HDR10 or PQ or Dolby Vision, however you want to call it. Um, just how to get the raw data into uh, DaVinci with the best color grading look using the Mystery Box Adobe Limited LUT. So I like to process all of our RAWs in Adobe Photoshop. Um, it's just really great raw interpreter. Um, but its version of HDR, its implementation of HDR is limited. So we're actually going to take a look at that now. Here's a time lapse that uh, we've built in, or that we shot when we were up in Yellowstone last year. And um, it's just a, we shot it on the Sony A7S, I believe. We're going to process these RAWs and take a look at what. Uh, what we've got and what settings we need for HDR. So the first thing that we need to do is go down to our workflow options here at the bottom. Um, I currently have it set, but I want to show you what you need for HDR. If you normally come in, it's going to be set to sRGB with a bit depth of 8 bits per channel. The first thing you need to do is switch that to Rec 2100 PQ, this setting here and you change your bit depth to 16 bits per channel. So Rec 2100 um, it uses the same color primaries as Rec 2020, and then we're saying using the PQ transform uh, with our intent being perceptual. Um, I'm not entirely sure why what this means with, uh, with the PQ HDR, but I seem to get better results out of Adobe when I have that set, so that's what we use. Go ahead and hit OK. Um, we'll take a look at our image. The first thing you'll notice is that your histogram up here has shifted. So now it's operating in the data range of HDR. But something that's important to notice is that if I try and push it up, it hard clips at about a thousand, at about 100 nits. And you'll see that um, when I bring that into DaVinci in a bit. Um, and so that's a problem. That's why we need the LUT to actually kind of fix this stuff here. So the first thing that I always do um, in camera raw is I'm going to change the color profile interpretation to the camera profile that we shot on, which in this case is neutral. Um, and then we're just going to do some basic color correction here. Uh, we want to bring up the exposure a little bit, um, bring down our shadows a little bit, just give it a nice little contrast, boost the vibrancy of the image, uh, look at their color temperature, warm that up a little bit, get that looking like uh, right about here where it just really pops. Um, and I'm applying that to all of the images. Now if this was a longer time lapse, I'd go through and I would double check that I haven't started clipping anything because I want to keep as much detail as I can in these RAWs for bringing it into HDR grading in a bit. Um, once I've got my settings right, the next thing I'm going to do is just select everything and save them. Here we need to, I've already pre-selected my folder. Uh, you want to save them as 16-bit TIFFs. Make sure the color space is the same that we had just set in our process, in our workflow, um, which is Rec 2100 PQ with 16 bits per channel with a perceptual intent. These files are going to be really big. Uncompressed TIFFs um, at 16 bits are just big um, in general, and so we're You'll want to convert them later, but for the first pass, we're going to want to bring them into DaVinci just like this. So go ahead and hit save. Um, this is a pretty time intensive operation, so it's best to just leave this render overnight or depending on how many photos you're processing and the power of your computer. This particular set has 71 photos in it. It'll take a little bit and we'll come back to seeing what happens in a moment. Okay, so our processing is done. We're going to um, close the camera raw interface and then we're going to import what we've just done here into DaVinci. So here we see the TIFF sequence that I just generated has showed up. We're going to bring that in. <coughs> Sorry, I have a little bit of a cold today. Um, I have it here in our timeline just to, to do some work on it. Um, you'll notice here I have two LUTs that I've applied. This one here is just to make this easier to show you guys, it is our HDR10 to SDR conversion LUT so that this looks normal on the screen. And then this first one here is our HDR, uh, um, Adobe Limited HDR to SD2084 LUT, which allows you to grade in PQ with a proper thing. What we want to take a look at here is our waveform. So with our LUT on, we have a really nice distribution in our waveform. Um, remember, this is SDR that we're looking at because of our, our LUT here. If I turn it off, you can see that the image gets really, really dim and dark, and it's very limited in its range. If I take off 
our SDR LUT, where you can see that even though we are very close to clipping in Photoshop, we're only at 100 nits. Um, when we go and enable the Adobe HDR LUT, what we've done is we've basically pulled this up into the HDR range, um, something closer to 1,000 nits, um, so that when we are working with it, we actually have as much of that data as we can. And you can see that that looks really good. We have a really great contrast ratio going on here, um, really deep into the darks, really high into the brights. And this is an image that we can work with and grade in DaVinci Resolve in HDR. What I would normally do next is I would render out in ProRes 444 at the source resolution uh, these clips so that I could work with them in, uh, in DaVinci in a little bit more real time, um, whereas the TIFF sequences are just really big and bulky and don't move over very well. Um, but that's it. That's the uh, workflow for taking a time lapse from Camera Raw and converting it into HDR10 video, or SMT SC2084 video, um, using the perceptual quantization uh, transfer function, and then uh, being able to grade with that from the more limited Adobe implementation of HDR.